everyone, Alyssa here. Welcome to CA Church. We're so happy that you're joining us today. You know, whether you've been attending our services for many years, or perhaps today is your first time tuning in, we are excited to have this opportunity every week to spend time sharing and connecting with you. We're going to start off today with worship, specifically in song. So for those of you who are maybe new to CA, singing in worship is the way that we can come together as one church family to celebrate who God is and what he's done for us. And so if you're comfortable doing so, wherever you may be, be it at home or maybe walking down the street with your headphones in, we invite you to join us in giving God all the glory, honor, and praise.
incense rise before you The lifting of my hands is sacrifice Oh Lord Jesus, turn your eyes upon me For I know there is mercy in your sight Your statutes are my heritage forever My heart is set on keeping your decrees Please still my anxious search toward rebellion Let love keep my will upon its knee Oh God, you are my God And I will ever praise you Oh God, you are my God Thank you, worship team, for leading us. Now is the time in our service where we pause to give an offering. If this is your first time checking out CA Church, or you don't yet consider yourself a follower of Jesus, let me just say once again how glad we are that you're here, and that this time we're spending together is not meant to ask for your money. But for those of you who call CA Church home and have committed your lives to following Jesus, we want to invite you to participate in the parts of God's mission that are being carried out right here through our church and its members. And one of the ways you can do so is through the giving of your finances. We also want to add that today's Sunday is where we take an offering for our Community Response Fund. The Community Response Fund is an extra donation that goes towards helping families and individuals in need that are right here in our own community. This fund has been especially vital since the start of the pandemic and it makes a significant impact on our newly initiated food pantry and cultural food bank. We want to thank you for the generosity and compassion you have already shown in this area and for those of you who gave to our food drive last month. As a reminder, you can continue to bring non-perishable food donations to the Mariner campus at any time throughout the week or on Sunday services. Okay, before we move on to the message, we'd like to share with you this month's missions update. First is the Mission of the Month. This November, our Mission of the Month is Christmas Village. Christmas Village is an annual event hosted by our church that focuses on providing a little extra help to those in our community during this special time of year. 
This year, Christmas Village will be happening on December 10th and 11th, and we will be hosting a turkey dinner for almost 400 people, alongside offering gifts and much needed items for children and their families. As in the past, it takes many faithful volunteers to make this event a blessing for those who attend. And so if you'd like to be involved, whether that be in the kitchen or sorting donations or wrapping gifts, we would love for you to join the team. To sign up or for more information, you can visit cachurch.info. Or if Christmas Village sounds like something that you or your family or maybe someone you know might be interested in attending, you can also register at cachurch.info. Secondly, many of you who have been a part of our church family for some time know that we partner with a wonderful ministry in Mexico. We work alongside them in many areas, but one of those areas includes child sponsorship, in which many of you already sponsor a child from the remote mountains of northern Mexico. Our sponsors not only meet the physical needs of children in Mexico, but they also faithfully pray for and communicate God's love to these children through written correspondence and visiting them in person. Today we'd like to share that recently the secondary school in the canyon has not been able to open because of pandemic restrictions and a lack of teachers. Therefore, many of the older children from Guacaivo have been boarding in the larger city of Juarez, Mexico in order to continue their education. Joining them are other children and orphans from a southern region of Mexico that we also partner with. In this region, Christians are heavily persecuted. As expected, education fees in the big city are substantial, alongside the cost of room, board, clothing, and school supplies. We know education is globally recognized as part of the solution to end the cycle of poverty, and we believe God values and gives to us His wisdom and understanding. Therefore, if any of you would like to sponsor one of these children, or even make a one-time contribution to their education, we would like to give you the opportunity to do so. For more information, you can visit cachurch.info. Lastly, many of you know Ahmed. He is the director of our local partner organization, House of Omid. Today we are excited to let him share with you a missions update about a project we have participated with him in the Middle East. Dear CA Church, it's been such a pleasure partnering with you at the House of Omid. Today I want to share with you about our most recent project that we have partnered with you. For the safety of people involved, we have to keep this project secret. If the local government finds out about this house, they will imprison and torture people that are involved. But I want to tell you through your generosity, we were able to purchase a house somewhere in the Middle East to serve the persecuted church, to serve our brothers and sisters that are secretly believers. And through purchase of this house, we will provide a safe space for some of these secret believers uh, to find a refuge when they are in trouble. At the same time, we are setting up a call center um, as a response to calls that we get uh, from our ministry in Middle East, as well as we are in the process of moving our church plant in that area in this house. God will be using your generosity in an amazing way uh, for the persecuted church through this house. This house uh, will be a place uh, for people to come rest, for people to come get discipled, and for people to find refuge. We're hoping to be able to help hundreds of our brothers and sisters who are persecuted, to help shelter them, disciple them, and love them. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your generosity to make this possible. And I want to especially thank you for your heart for our persecuted brothers and sisters. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much for that update, Ahmed. Now we invite you to join us as we quiet our minds and ready our hearts to hear what God has to share with us through the message and His Word today. Well, hey, CA Church, my name's Andrew, and this is Mark. We're a few pastors at the church here, and uh, we're honored that you're tuning in. If you're tuning in on Sunday, it's Halloween, and we thought it would be perfectly fitting today to talk about something really scary, debt. <laughs> it really is scary, though. You know, Mark and I have been uh, praying about this message for a while. We've been talking about it, and our hearts are really uh, for just seeing you spiritually healthy 
And uh, every time Mark preaches, every time I lead worship or I speak, uh, it's our desire that we uh, connect with you and we make sure that we are on a journey to spiritual health. And so because of that, because we care about your spiritual well-being, we want to talk about debt today because it is very, very important. Our finances are so intertwined with our spiritual journey. And so we're going to be talking about financial margin and what it looks like to get out of debt. So when we talk about money today, as your pastors, we are not asking something from you. We are asking something for you. This is for your good. This is for the good of your family. This is uh, the good for leaving a legacy and uh, generations to come. In fact, Proverbs 13, 22 says this, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. And so there are really two roads that we can take when it comes to financial margin and really any decision in your life. You can take the road of the fool, which is foolishness, and you can take the road of the wise, which is wisdom. And so Mark, why don't you start us off today by unpacking that word fool, just to make sure everyone who's watching knows you're not calling them a twit. <laughs> well, first let's understand what it means to be foolish. Foolishness is about living and making decisions that oppose and ignore God. Hmm. It's not about intelligence, because there's people that have intelligence that become foolish when it comes to their finances. But wisdom comes with when a person seeks and obeys God. Proverbs reveal a contrast between uh, foolishness and wisdom in our financial situations. Mm. For instance, let me just go, go through a couple. Number one, fools have no extra, no margin, but wise people have and live with margin. Proverbs 21, 20, the wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they have on mm. themselves. Fools live from paycheck to paycheck, but wise people have savings and have extra. Mm. Secondly, fools think that I just need to have a little more or I need to have a little better. Where wise people come along and they say, what I have is fine. Mm. Wise is to be content. First Timothy 6, starting in verse 6. Yet uh, true godliness with contentment is in itself great gain. After all, we brought nothing with us into this world, mm -hmm. and we can't take anything from this world. So if you have enough food and clothing, let us be content. Mm -hmm. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmless desires, plunges them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money, not money, but, but for the love of money That's is good. the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Third point is that fools think that we need it now. Wise people decide and can wait for God, but fools want it now. Mm -hmm. I've got a story that I want to talk to you about. It happened a number of years ago for me. I started with a car accident where I, somebody smashed into the back of my car and totaled my car. And I thought, well, I got to hurry up and get someone get something purchased. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to Diane about this, and she said, I just get the sense, why don't we just wait for a while? Who wants to wait for a while? <laughs> I mean, I was talking about my car. So anyhow, I was waiting for a while, patiently. And uh, anyhow, the Sunday or I mean uh, Monday came along, and um, my friend said, "Can I uh, have lunch with you today?" I didn't want to have lunch with anybody. I was grumpy, and <laughs> but I said, hey, "Okay, I'll, I'll show up." I walk into his office. He says, by the way, do you have a, a loony? I said, I'm, I'm buying you lunch. Oh, yeah, I got a loony. I got a loony and handed it to him. He says, we have a deal. I said, what deal? He said, well, go out that door and you will see a BMW M, or sorry, D BMW 533i. Hmm. Driven only by an old lady to church. Not kidding. No exaggeration. Hunt under a hundred or under twenty thousand k on this car. Goodness. It was beautiful. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, sir. If you were watching, I have a toonie. <laughs> I understand inflation. I would love a five series. A five series. Five Thank series. you, sir. <laughs> if I didn't wait, I would have ended up with a Chevy. Now, I know, I know Bruce Bond loves Chevys, but you know what? Compared to the BMW, come on. It's a Chevy. It's a Chevy. Wise people know how to wait. Hmm. Simple as that. Hmm. Fourthly, fools think I just have an income problem. I just need to make a little bit more money. Hmm. Wise people know that they have a heart problem. Hmm. Like envy and greed, coveting, impatience, insecurity, all of those and more. The problem is not that our income is too low. The problem is that our hearts are sick. Hmm. Now, I was talking to Andrew a while ago, 
and he talked to me about his, his God story and he, went to, he shared it with me. I wanted you to hear this as a church family. So Andrew, tell us about your story. Yeah. I, I knew when you told me, it was, it was a great story and I want our church to hear what, you, what you're going through. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, my story started on a one summer evening where one of our pastors, he came over to our house for a barbecue and uh, he mentioned uh, someone by the name of Dave Ramsey said to go check him out online. And so I said, okay, I love cooking shows. That'll be fantastic. And uh, I Googled him and realized it's actually not a Google, that's uh, Gordon Ramsay, uh, not Dave Ramsay. And Dave Ramsay's all about finances and debt. And so I thought I get to watch someone make this beautiful steak. And next thing you know, <laughs> I'm dead meat. All right, I realized my financial situation is a disaster. And so he really hit on some areas that uh, I tried to really ignore, to be honest, in our lives. And so. We started watching it more and more. Michelle uh, started watching it and she started to love it. She's the natural saver in our family and I am the gifted spender. Uh, it's one of my spiritual gifts. But uh, so, you know, if, you are, if you're married and you have that dynamic where there's one that's a spender, one that's a saver, you know it's not easy to blend together. It's a great partnership, but it takes a lot of work. And so for us, we were getting more and more intrigued, Michelle more than me, because her dream of saving is coming to reality. And, my dream of spending is unfortunately dying off pretty quickly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we got more and more into it and we just realized more and more uh, just the situation we are in is not good. And um, I honestly tried to just put my head in the sand and just pretend like it didn't exist. I didn't like those numbers, that debt looking at me when I signed into our online banking. And so I just tried to ignore it as much as I could. But the time came where our debt was just piling more and more and we just kept accumulating and living beyond our means and um, we just knew that uh, this needed to end. It was, a, it was a pretty rough situation. I look at the road that you just mentioned where there's a road of the fool and road of the wise and I literally took all those exits as a fool. I drove down each one of those paths. I didn't have enough. I always needed more. I needed it immediately. Um, it was just a constant and uh, I thought it was an income problem, not a heart problem until God changed our lives and revealed to us that it was a heart problem and that we were in need of heart surgery. I was driving home uh, from the dealership. I bought a brand new car. I traded in my 2013 because I thought the 2013 was too old and I needed something newer, which is one of the lies that I thought my car was perfectly fine. I mean, it wasn't a Chevy, so we were fine. Um, but I uh, just thought I needed brand new. And so I traded in, I got this new car, I'm driving home, living the dream, I'm so excited, we financed it, and I'm really happy, windows down, beautiful day, my hair's flowing, that's right, I had hair at the time. And um, everything was great until I turned on a Dave Ramsey podcast. I'm driving home from the dealership, and he goes on a five minute rant about how anyone who buys a brand new car from a dealership is a twit. Uh -huh. He talks about the financial decision of that and the investment that is and how such a poor investment and how you drive off the lot and you lose X amount of percentage. And I thought, wow, suddenly this uh, new car smell started to smell a little expensive <laughs> and smell like a mistake. <laughs> so I came home and I realized, oh man, that was an educational experience for me. And I thought, okay, how, how do I fix this? And it really did put a lot of strain on our marriage, not just the car, but just in general, the piling on of debt, living beyond our means and our debt growing, 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 line of credit going up, visa going up. Uh, it just wasn't a good situation. And so we just knew this needed to come to an end and we needed to fix the mistakes we made. And so uh, we really started listening to the podcast a lot and trying to really figure out what the next step would be. So Andrew, what's the main turning point that uh, made you say, I, I gotta do something about this? Yeah, there's a family that Michelle and I, we love at our church, and we just wanted to encourage them and bless them with a gift. And so we did something called Nikki Nikki Nine Door. Now, do you know what Nikki Nikki Nine Door is? Many of you probably don't. Uh, this used to be something that was really fun. You would knock on someone's door, and you'd go hide in the bush, and you'd wait, they'd open the door, and you know no one's there, and you sit in the bush, and you laugh, and you think it's the funniest thing in the world. It's obviously not. But when you're a kid, <laughs> It's hilarious. Okay. Anyways, we wanted to do a Nikki Nikki Nine Door. It was childlike faith, right? We wanted to live like kids. Okay. And so uh, we uh, got you know some groceries for them, and we got a card to just write an encouraging word with some scriptures, and we gave them some money and flowers, different things. And you know, I'm in the driver's seat, cars in drive, and my wife Michelle kind of walks up to the steps and drops everything, and Nikki Nikki Nine Doors it. She knocks on the door, jumps in the car, we peel out, and we're just laughing, having the best time ever. <laughs> 
And we thought to ourselves, what a rush, this is amazing. We want to do this more. We can't do this if we're in debt. We don't have the ability to give like this and do it all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I think for us in that moment, it was a wake up call and it was the Lord illuminating that, okay, it's not an income problem, it's a heart problem. And that I think in that moment, we both had a turning point. And it was like God kind of gave us heart surgery and we got new hearts in that moment. Mm -hmm. And we decided we want to be radically generous, so we need to make some changes. And honestly, in that moment for Michelle and I, it uh, not only transformed our lives as individuals, it really transformed our marriage. Um, our love for each other grew and being on mission together, having the same goal and the same dream and the same vision just really unified us in a unique way that we didn't really experience before. And so it really changed our marriage significantly, uh, night and day. Um, it even changed the way that we had perspective on life. It filled our hearts with gratitude to what we did have. We were content mm -hmm. with what we already had. Uh, when we were praying, you know, as we were going through this process, we'd pray every night and we'd thank God for our dishwasher. Thank you, Lord, that we get to borrow your dishwasher today. Thank you, Lord, that we get to borrow your car to drive to work. Thank you, Lord, we get to stay over at your house tonight. Um, we just had a fresh perspective. Everything is his. Mm -hmm. And um, and so he just really just changed our hearts. He owns all the fries. He owns all the fries, man, and the dipping sauce and the nuggets. <laughs> but it was it really was uh, just a heart transplants in that wow. moment. That was the turning point for us. Okay, we want to do this all the time. How can we do this? We need to address the debt that's been looming over us for years. So what was the process then yeah. to get out of debt? The process was not easy. It's, it's a, a very challenging process. It's, uh, you need to be intense with it. You need to be aggressive and attack it. This is the reality. You can wander into debt very easily. You don't wander out. Uh, it is not easy to wander out. No. So you have to really attack it. You have to be aggressive. And so we just went 100%. You need to be all in. You can't casually pay it off. You need to really attack it. And so we had uh, certain steps that we did to kind of help us along that journey. And of course, the first process is prayer. We needed to prayerfully bring this to God mm -hmm. and make a commitment to Him. Uh, the Bible talks in Proverbs chapter 6. It says, don't make yourself responsible for any debt. Don't make such deals with friends and strangers. If you do, your words will trap you. You will be under the power of other people, so you must go and free yourself. Beg them to free you from the debt. Don't wait to rest or sleep. Escape from that trap like a gazelle running from the hunter. Free yourself like a bird flying away from a trap. And so and Dave Ramsey always talks about gazelle intensity, and it's actually from that passage in Proverbs chapter 6. You need to be extremely aggressive. Don't rest. Don't relax. Don't wait. Be on attack mode, and you need to really fight it. And so there were some practical steps that Michelle and I did that really helped us. Uh, there's seven steps that you can do, and I'll share a couple of them that relate to you know, the area of debt. But the first one is put $1,000 in your emergency fund, set it aside. Okay. Then you list all your debt from the lowest debt to the most expensive debt. This is not including your house. And then you start attacking the debt from the smallest to the largest. Don't worry about interest rate. Don't worry about any of that stuff. But then it starts to have a snowball effect where you pay off the first one and you guys get excited. And you pay off the second one. Oh my goodness, I think we can actually do this. And next thing you know, you guys are on a roll and you're on this path together. There's a few more steps after that. Step seven, and I want to say, is not to be extremely wealthy, live lavishly, buy a Ferrari, go on vacations and do all these different things. In fact, step seven is now that you've accumulated, you've paid off all your debt, you paid off your house, you paid off everything, now live radically generous. The whole okay. point of getting out of debt is not to be gain wealth and to live lavishly. Uh, the whole point of getting out of debt is to be radically generous. Wow. Because like he preached last week, Acts chapter 20, verse 35, Jesus himself says, it is actually more blessed to give than to receive. And so if we want to actually take James 1 seriously and say, hey, we don't want to just be hearers of the word. We want to be hearers and doers of the word. Well, we see that passage. It actually is better to give than to receive. Yeah. Let's be doers. And so Michelle and I, we decided let's be doers. And when we did that and when it changed us, uh, we thought, okay, everything that we're reading really is true. And so 
Um, the whole point of it is to get is to get out of debt to, to be generous. Now the process for getting out of debt was radical. Again, you have to be aggressive. And so for us, no more eating out, no restaurants. Uh, we're literally eating beans and rice for dinner. And I don't like beans. Um, no, but I don't like them anymore, anyhow. I don't like them anymore, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, it's literally beans and rice. Um, if people are asking us, hey, let's go to the movies, let's go to dinner, the answer is no. We mm -hmm. just, we don't have margin for that. And so we just had to really attack it. No more Costco membership. Because uh, Costco, we'd go, we have an agenda to buy a few things. Next thing you know, it's a $500 bill. Yep. And so for Kleenex, we had to buy one Kleenex box at a time. You had to be very frugal with blowing your nose. Is it worth it? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. That was the reality. So that, and it, you no know, restaurants. I mean, maybe a two can dine coupon for twelve ninety nine. Maybe we were blessed with Wendy's once a month. But no going out, no restaurants, none of that stuff. Um, you know, even our cereal. We had to remove name brand cereal, and we got no name. So instead of oh. Cheerios, we are eating oat holes. Oh no. <laughs> oat holes. Okay. Now, oat holes taste exactly as it sounds. Uh, disgusting. Um, it tasted like the box. It was absolutely awful. Ugh. And so we had to go aggressive. We had to do whatever we could. And so you sit with your budget and figure out what can you take out. And you have to be radical. And honestly, you have to be reminded of this. This is very temporary. You're not doing this and it's going to be your life forever. You live like nobody else now, so you can live like nobody else later. And so it's a struggle for a season, but then you get to be radically generous after, and it's worth it. And so we just had to really hone in on a lot of different things. And, and our family thought I was crazy. Our friends thought we were crazy. You know, it was just a, it was a, it was a crazy time, but, but it was good for us. Yeah. It was so good. We also went to envelope systems. So no debit, no credit, nothing. We would pull our money out and we would put them in designated envelopes for gas, groceries, pharmacy, whatever. And you physically feel the money leaving you instead of tap here, tap here, tap here. You're not really keeping track anymore with all the taps. So you physically feel the money, you feel it, you see what's left, you're aware. And it just helps you frame, okay, I need to be really careful. And so we did that for a long season to make sure, hey, if your gas is out, too bad you're carpooling with someone or you're working from home. Whatever you got, like you got to be really intense with it. John, John will yeah. give you another ride. Yeah, the guy who actually told me yes. about John blame Fortune. Him. Who, I blame him. He actually carpooled. He drove me to church many times and it was his fault because he's the one who told me about Dame Ramsey. So that was his punishment. Fortunate John. Yeah, fortunate John. So that was his punishment. So we, we ended up also selling a bunch of our belongings. We'll talk a little later about how giving actually is the antidote to materialism. And so the more we give, the more we realize we don't really need a lot of the stuff we have. And so we sold a bunch of our personal belongings, shoes, clothes, whatever we had to do. We just got rid of a bunch of stuff and, um, and helped to attack the debt. But by doing that envelope system, budgeting, you know, selling a whole bunch of stuff, oat holes, Whatever we had to do, by doing that, we aggressively attacked our debt and we were able to pay almost $45,000 off in just over a year. Wow. Yeah. Good for you. And I do want to mention one more thing that's really important. When we were in debt and we were going through this journey, we were also in a building campaign, Forward in Faith. This was the first campaign that we started for this new building. And so for us, we were still in debt. But one thing that we've learned you never be stingy with God. Always be generous with God. Even if you have to hold off on other things, never hold off on giving to God. And for us, that was a season for three years where we double tithed, where our tithing went to the general fund and the next tithe went specifically to the building. And so that was hard for us in the midst of debt and all that other stuff. But God radically blessed us. And honestly, I believe because of our generosity towards God, he helped us pay our debt off that fast mm -hmm. because of the generosity. So okay. wherever you are in your journey, the one thing that doesn't change, other things change temporarily in your budget. The one thing that doesn't change is being generous with God. Like so it. what do you say to people who are in debt today? Yeah, to people who are in debt today, I would tell them, if you're watching, you are normal. Uh, you are the average Canadian citizen. In fact, $3,400 is the average visa debt for Canada. And if you have $0 in your bank account, you are actually ahead of a lot of Canadians. So who would have thought being broke is actually being ahead? Yeah. And it's the reality that debt is normal. 
uh, if you want to get the latest and greatest, the new gadgets, the new this, and upgrade your car even though you don't need to, uh, this involves debt. And so debt is very normal, uh, quote unquote, but I would tell you, you don't have to be in debt. Um, you know, God does not want you to be indebted to anyone. The Bible talks about being a, the borrower is a slave to the lender. And this is not something that is God's will for your life. So what I would tell you is if you're watching and you're in debt, you don't have to be in debt. There are ways to get out of your mm -hmm. uh, debt and your financial situations. It takes hard work. It takes, yeah. you know, a lot of effort, but Commitment. you can do it. You can crush your debt before your debt crushes you. And like I said earlier, you can easily wander into debt. You don't easily wander out. No. It takes hard work, but you can do it. Even if you feel, you know what, I'm too far gone. I have so many things, it's piled so high. Our pile seemed like a mountain. And uh, it's never impossible. With God's help, you can, do, you can do it. And I'm gonna say a word that was a swear word to me for many years, and it's the word budget. I didn't like that word because that would tell me what I can and can't do. And mm -hmm. as a spender, I don't wanna be, have any of those guardrails. Yeah. And so I tell you, if you're in debt, a detailed budget will be your best friend. Uh, every penny has a place and has a purpose. And so you need to really hone in. Uh, if you're married, sit together, look over a budget, um, get everything in line. And again, get the bare minimum that you need. So heat, food, and light is basically the bare minimum. Anything else you can kind of temporarily take out of your life for a season and then put back again. Live like no one else so you can live like no one else. But I would say a budget is a big, big one. Uh, and just a little important note for budgets, when Michelle and I started with our budgets, I would sit at one end of the table, she sat at the other end of the table. We both had our devices and there's a light over our table and it always felt like the light was kind of over my head and I was kind of sweating <laughs> and I was kind of feeling interrogated to be honest. And we'd look at our financial statements and Michelle would say, so where were you on June 9th? And I would look and I say, apparently Lord Co. And I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> and this would happen all the time. That's not the way I say do your budget together. What really changed it for us is when actually Michelle sat beside me and we realized, hey, you know what? We're actually on the same team and we're better together than trying to do this separately. And so when she sat beside me, we had one device, one thing, and we prayerfully walked through our budget. You know, she was gracious with my mistakes and whatever. And, um, that was kind of the best way of doing a budget. So when you do a budget, do it together. Uh, that's really important, but a budget is going to be your best friend. We used a program called Mint, M-I-N-T. That kind of helped us, um, kind of get everything in line. It kind of connects with your different online banking. So that was very helpful. We also did the envelope system. So if you want to try that, you can try that again. So you feel the money going out, you see what you have left. That really helps. And also if you are married or if you're single, I'd say this is really important. Get people in your corner. Find people to support you. Because what you're doing is very weird. Uh, debt is so normal that people want to get out of debt. You're kind of a little bit of a weirdo. And if you want to cash flow your school and your education instead of getting a student loan, that's really bizarre and weird. And so find people who are for you, who are going to kind of fight this with you and cheer you on. You need cheerleaders. Yeah. John Fortune was a cheerleader and my parents, our families were cheerleaders and we needed that because we knew we were going against culture. We're doing something against culture. And I do want to say for those of you who are debt free, who are watching as well, if there are any weirdos who are watching, um, what are you doing with the, uh, the gift that God's given you? For Michelle and I, we feel we're in the season now where we have something called a generosity pot. We don't, again, to get to step seven, to be debt free is not to live lavish and hoard all the money ourselves and buy stuff for ourselves. The whole point is to be radically generous. So if you're watching and you are debt free, Maybe spend some time and ask yourself, what am I doing to be generous? What am I doing to be radically generous? Because it's better to give than to receive. And so for us, when we have this generosity pot, now it actually makes us live lives that are aware, alert, and available mm -hmm. to what God is speaking. Who can I bless? Who can I encourage? Who can I support? How can I support them? And so I encourage you, those who are uh, financially experiencing financial freedom to, uh, question and ask yourself and, and ask your spouse that too. You know, buddy, we, you've given us some great stuff to, and to think on. And I mean, um, really, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. So where do we go from here now? Yeah. So the next steps I think are to just, we really need to just put God first above everything. 
And so number one is involve God. He's not afraid of your mess. He's not afraid of the mess you made financially. Uh, in fact, he's more capable of handling it than you are. And so bring him into it. You know, Isaiah, Isaiah, what is it? Isaiah 55 says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. So he knows, yeah. involve him and he's gonna help you. And the second one is give. Uh, again, giving is the antidote to materialism. And so don't be stingy with God, continue to give. So involve God, give towards God. The third one is trust God. Trust that he will help you. Yeah. Trust that he's for you. Trust that, you know, the passage that talks about, don't I feed the birds? Like, don't worry, but don't be anxious about your clothes or what you eat or where you're going to go. Don't, don't be anxious about any of those things. Don't I feed the birds in the air? Trust that God is going to provide everything you need. He's going to provide the ways out. He's going to give you creative ways to get out of debt. But involve him, give towards him, trust him, and believe that he's for you. He's on your side. Believe that he is the CEO of your life. He's your financial planner. He's your bank. Again, as you said, he owns all the fries, all the nuggets, all the dipping sauce. So believe that and uh, trust him in that. And I think God's going to help you through it. I'll end with Romans 13. It starts in verse 7. It says, Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom owes owed to revenue, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. And so by involving him, by giving, trusting him, believing in him, God's going to help you through it. And he's going to get you out of your financial situation. I want to give you a conclusion before we pray um, that there is something that we want to offer in the new year, just financial courses that we can maybe help walk through some of these situations with you. And we can help give you resources and tools to not only have and experience financial freedom, but to have the opportunity and to coach you through the process of what it looks like to be radically generous in your life. And so stay tuned in the new year. I'm very, very excited. And I know Diane, um, Mark's wife, is going to be helping organize that as well. So we're very excited to offer that and to just help people because, again, this is so connected to the spiritual life. It is. And so we really want to help you experience this in your life. Andrew, thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks, and uh, thank I you. think there's a lot of wisdom that you were talking about. If we can apply those things, it'll be great. Yeah. Let me uh, turn to the, you this, as individuals and as families. So le let me remind you that next week is Pledge Sunday, mm -hmm. and uh, that's when we're asking people to give pledges. Great uh, opportunity to put some of this in practice. It, it eh? really is. Yeah. Yeah. So if you'll be praying about that, mm -hmm. folks, we'd appreciate that. Mm -hmm. let's, let's pray together. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the wisdom choices that it took for Andrew and Michelle to do this, the sacrifice to be obedient, and in order to set them up to be generous. Lord, we pray that you would continue to entrust them with all kinds of funds so they can do that. Mm. And Lord, do that with the rest of us as mm. well. We, we choose to be weird for you. Mm. And thank you for the opportunity of learning some things here. We pray now that you would give us wisdom to apply yeah. this. Yeah and change us as we get ready for making other faith steps mm. in our church. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' mm. name, amen. Amen, amen. Thanks, buddy. Well, thanks so much for joining us, church. If you're new today, or maybe you want to know more about Jesus, please connect with us. Seriously, we would love nothing more than to hear from you and walk alongside you on this journey. And so one of the ways you can connect with us, even if you aren't watching live right now, is to visit cachurch.info and click on the I'm Newish icon, and someone will connect with you as soon as possible. If you're watching live, now we're going to enter into a time of discussion. Soon there will be some questions that appear on the screen. These are discussion questions in reference to the message you heard today, and so that is exactly what we encourage you to do. Talk about them. We believe engaging with the message today will help to strengthen you in your faith. All right, well that's it from me. We love you, church, and we just want to send you off with this blessing. That this week, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. See you next time.